Hello, I'm Miranda. This is my third War Machine Battle Report. I play Kador, and today I'll be fighting a 25-point battle against Crix. Prime Vladimir Sapesky has a single Devastator Heavy Warjack in his battle group. He also brought along a minimum unit of four battle mechanics, a Manhunter Solo, a minimum unit of six Winter Guard Infantry with the Officer and Standard Unit Attachment. They are being led by Kavni Joseph Grigorovich. I also have a five-man unit of Man of War Shock Troopers. Prime Denegra has a Scarlock Thrall attached to her today. In her battle group, she also has a Slayer Helljack, a Death Ripper Bonejack, and a Canker Worm. She also brought along a Necrotech with this Scrap Thrall, an additional unit of three Scrap Thralls, and the bulk of his army is made up of a full 10-man unit of Bane Thralls with an Officer and Standard Attachment. I won the dice roll, so I decided to go first. Vlad is starting off in the middle of his deployment zone, standing behind his Devastator and unit of mechanics. The Winter Guard are to his right, and the Shock Troopers are to his left. The War Witch Denegra is starting alongside her Death Ripper and her Scarlock Thrall. Her Slayer and Kanker Worm are off to her left. The large unit of Bane Thralls is just behind her. The Necrotech and unit of Scrap Thralls are to her far left, and a lone Scrap Thrall is to her right. I deployed my Manhunter solo in a forest to the left of my main force. Kator turn one. In the control phase, Vlad allocates one point of focus to the Devastator, Warjack, and keeps the rest for himself. The Devastator activates and spends his point of focus to run a full 8 inches. Then the Man of War Shock Troopers run forward, also going 8 inches. After that, the Mechanics run, and with a 10 inch range, they are able to line up around the base of the Devastator. The Winter Guard issue a run -over. They move their full 12 inches to end up ahead of the rest of the Kadoran force. Kovnik Joe advances behind them while giving the speech Courage of the Forefathers, making the Winter Guard tough and fearless for the rest of the round. Vladimir Zapesky activates and spends four focus to cast Blood of Kings on himself. This grants him plus three strength, mat, defense, and armor for one round. It also gives him plus three speed, allowing him to advance nine inches forward. Finally, my Manhunter moves a short distance through the forest, staying in cover. Crick's turn one. In the control phase, Denegra allocates one focus each to the Death Ripper, Slayer, and Kanker Worm. She keeps four focus for herself. The Death Ripper Bonejack spends one point of focus and runs up the middle of the field. Next, Denegra activates and spends three focus to cast Ghost Walk on the Slayer Helljack, turning the model ghostly for one turn. Then Denegra moves forward and uses one focus to cast Influence through the Death Ripper's Arc Mode and onto one of the Shock Troopers. The 10-inch range of the spell, however, falls short. Next, Cankerworm uses his point of focus to run a full 12 inches. Then Slayer activates and spends a point of focus to run as well. He has Ghost Walk on him, so he can glide through terrain without penalty. The Scrap Thralls get a run order and move 10 inches forward. Then the Solo Scrap Thrall runs his full distance as well. The Necrotech runs as well, ending up behind the Slayer. The Scarlock Thrall moves up beside the Necro. Finally, the Bane Thralls issue a run order. They run downfield toward the Man of War unit. Mm -hmm. 
Hedor, turn two. In Vlad's control phase, he allocates one focus to his Devastator Warjack and keeps the remaining focus for himself. He then activates and spends four of his focus to cast Signs and Portents on himself. This allows units in his control area to roll an additional die on attack and damage rolls, then remove the lowest one. After that, he moves up behind the Mana War unit. Then, the Mana War unit issues a Shield Wall order and moves up four inches. Once they are in position, they fire their shield cannons at the Slayer Helljack. The cannons only have a 6 inch range, and only one of the shock troopers is in range. With a defense of 13, the shock trooper needs an 8 or better to hit the Slayer. And he does with no problem. The Slayer has an armor 17, so I roll dice minus 3 for my power 14 shield cannon. I roll a 9, doing 6 damage to column 4. Next, the Winter Guard issue a Bob and Weave order and advance closer to the enemy's jacks. The first Winter Guardsman fires at one of the Scrap Thralls using Grape Shot, which is an 8 inch spray power 10 shot. Scrap Thralls have a defense 11, and with signs and portents affecting my Winter Guard, he should have no problem rolling 6 or better to hit him. I roll dice minus 2 and destroy him. When these guys die, you center a 4 inch template over them to see what is hit in the explosion. The scrap thrall next to him was a little too close and is hit with a power 8 blast. I rolled dice minus 4 against his armor 12 and he is destroyed as well, chaining his explosion to the next thrall, destroying that one as well. The next four Winter Guard are going to CRA Canker Worm. The shot will originate from the officer with her ranged attack of 6. With the plus 4 CRA bonus, she will only need to roll a 4 or better against Canker Worm's defense 14. She does, and rolls straight dice against the Jack's armor 16. Kangaroom takes 11 damage to column 6. The three remaining Winter Guard are going to CRA the Death Ripper Bone Jack. One of them is out of range, so there is only a CRA bonus of 2. Against defense 15, I need an 8 to hit. My power 14 shot hits, and I roll straight dice for damage. The Death Ripper takes 6 damage to column 1. Cognic Joe advances up some more and continues giving speeches about how much courage our forefathers had. The battle mechanics move to the side surrounding Vlad. Then, the Devastator activates and spends a point of focus to run around to the other side of the Man of War unit. And finally, the Manhunter backs up, trying to stay out of range of the remaining scrap thrall. Crix, turn two. In the control phase, Denegra allocates one focus to Cankerworm and one focus to the Slayer. The other five focus she keeps for herself. The Death Ripper activates and advances directly toward the unit of Man of War. The Necrotech advances and performs a repair action on the Slayer. He needs to roll under an 8, and he does, so he gets to repair 5 points of damage to the Slayer Helljack. Then the Slayer activates, using its point of focus to run. It moves sideways, matching up with the Devastator Kedoran Jack. The Cankerworm spends its focus to run as well, and ends up right next to the Slayer. Next, the unit of Bane Thralls activate and advance up field, trying to stay out of cannon range from the Manowar Shock Troopers. Denegra moves around behind the Bane Thralls. Denegra then casts Scourge through her arc node of the Manowars. They are in cover, which gives them a plus 4 defense, making it 15. He boosts to hit, needing an 8, but misses. The attack scatters and knocks down Kovnik Joe, but does not damage him. The Scrap Thrall solo runs, closing distance on the Manhunter. The Scarlet Thrall will advance, staying close to Denegra. Kedor, turn three. In the control phase, Vlad allocates one focus to the Devastator. He will keep the rest of his focus. 
Blood will activate first. He casts Boundless Charge on a single Mana War Shock Trooper. He moves up behind the Mana Wars and casts Signs and Portents again, then uses his feet, Force March. This doubles the base speed of Vlad's Warjacks and allows them to run or charge for free. Next, the Devastator will activate and charge 11 inches toward Cankerworm and use Reign of Death. This inflicts power 18 blast damage to all models in base to base with him and power 9 blast damage to models within 3 inches, making the Devastator one of my favorite jacks to use. First, we resolve damage with the Bane Thralls in base to base. He fails his tough roll and is killed outright. For Cankerworm, I will roll dice plus 2. I chose to boost the damage roll. This, along with Signs and Portents, allows me to roll 4 dice for damage, removing the lowest one. This inflicts 12 damage to column 2, leaving the jack with only one hitbox left. The rest of the blast hits 6 more Bane Thralls with power 9, so I need to roll a 7 up to trigger a tough roll. Keep in mind Signs and Portents is affecting these rolls. First one I exceed its armor and it fails the tough roll. Next one I exceed its armor and it makes the tough roll. Third one takes no damage. Fourth one I exceed armor, but it makes the tough roll. Fifth one is an officer and he only takes one point of damage. Sixth one takes damage and fails the tough roll. I also roll damage against the Slayer Helljack at dice minus eight. I cause one point of damage to column four. Next, the Manhunter activates and makes a hasty retreat from the Scrap Thrall, making her way near my Mechanics and Mana War. Then the Mechanics move up, creating a screen to protect my Warcaster. Now I activate Cosmic Joe. He gets up and gives his speech for the Motherland, boosting my Winterguard's attack rolls this round. This stack of signs of portents should be pretty potent. The Winter Guard activate and issue a bob and weave order while getting into position to shoot. I need to stay two inches away from the Necrotech to keep from becoming engaged as the Necrotech has reach. First, I shoot at the Necrotech, needing seven to hit, which I do. I roll a 17 against the model, reducing it to one hit point. Another Winter Guard shoots at the Necrotech. He hits and kills. Now my Winter Guard will begin shooting Bane Thralls. The first Winter Guard will use Grape Shot, granted by the UA. This is a spray attack, which means I ignore stealth. I am in range of one Bane Thrall. Again, I roll four dice and discard the lowest. I need a seven or better to hit, and I make the shot with no problem. Grape Shot is power 10, and the Bane Thralls have armor 15. This means I need a six or better to trigger their tough roll. I exceed the Bane Thrall's armor, and it failed the tough roll. Another Winter Guard will use Grape Shot at the Bane Thralls. The spray overlaps five of them. I hit the first model, and it fails its tough roll. The second one is hit, and makes its tough roll. The third one is hit, and fails its tough roll. The fourth one is hit, failing his tough roll as well. He drops his standard and another model picks it up. The fifth one is hit and makes his tough roll. The Winter Guard officer shoots at the Death Ripper, needing a 9 to hit, which I make. I roll dice minus 2, inflicting 9 damage to column 1. My standard bearer shoots at the Death Ripper as well. He needs a 10, which I get. Again, dice minus 2. And I do 6 damage to column 5, leaving a wreck marker. Another Winter Guard fires at the Bane Thralls using Grape Shot. His template hits 4 targets. The first one is hit, and the Bane Thrall fails its tough roll. The second one is hit, and fails his tough roll as well. The third Bane Thrall is hit, and he makes his tough roll. The last one is hit, but he fails his. Finally, my last Winter Guard uses Grape Shot on the last of the Bane Thralls. The Standard Bearer is hit, and he fails his tough roll. 
The last Bane Thrall is hit and does not get a tough roll because the standard is now gone. So, with Signs and Portents, along with Cobb of Joe, my Winter Guard eliminated what was left of my opponent's Bane Thrall unit. At this point, my opponent forfeits the game. That was a brutal round, leaving him with only five models on board and my entire army bearing down on him. So, Kador victory! So, this is the first game I've really seen the full potency of Signs and Portents, especially mixed with Cobb of Joe. Rolling four dice to hit and three dice on damage, even if you're discarding the lowest, is pretty intense. Um, you almost never miss. So on that note, I will be purchasing four more Winter Guard to fill out that unit. Uh, and Vlad is excellent with Winter Guard. Still haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of my Nano or Shock Troopers. Uh, medium base infantry seems good maybe for holding the line. They're only speed four. Um, so just moving them up slowly, they seem maybe better defensively than offensively. Um, so maybe that they haven't seen a lot of action is good. As far as Warjacks go, the Devastator was amazing. He really didn't need a lot of focus. He's a complete infantry killer. Um, just a really an amazing Jack. I will certainly use him more. And I will finish him. Uh, he was kind of naked there, so I apologize for that. My Devastator never needed more than one focus, really, that whole game. I wonder if he's actually good to Jack Marshall with. Um, leave some comments below if, you, if you've done that. I'd like to know, you know if that's a good strategy or not. It seems like it might be. So. Well, I hope you enjoyed my Crooks battle today. I learned some new things. I know my opponent did, too. He did ask for a rematch, so you guys can look forward to that in the future. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.